I managed to find a paper from the University of Cambridge, and I believe this is a paper that first year math students would sit at the end of their first year, and this kind of says whether or not they get into second year or not. So I went to Oxford, not Cambridge, so I'm not super sure on how their exam system works, um, but that sounds pretty pretty reasonable given what we did at Oxford. Um, and this here is from a real analysis uh, paper, or a real this is a real analysis problem, and this is relatively standard. This kind of adheres to the course that we did at Oxford, so I imagine it's kind of similar to what's done at Cambridge. Anyway, let's get stuck into the problem. We have an and bn being two, sequence of, two sequences of positive real numbers such that the infinite sums of an and bn both converge. And there's three parts to this question. The first part, we want to show that the sum of uh, an squared converges. And part b, we want to show that the sum of the square root of an and b times bn converges. And then part c, we want to show that the sum of the square root of an times n to the power of minus p converges if p is bigger than a half. And then we want to give an example to show that this series needn't converge for p equals a half. So interesting. Anyway, let's just get stuck in here. So I'm not going to be awfully rigorous in how I prove these. So in an exam, it would take a little bit longer to answer these because you've got to, you know, give your epsilons, your deltas and whatnot. Um, here, I'm just going to kind of roughly hand wave it just so you get the gist of it. And also not to scare off anyone who's not studied analysis in any kind of high level of detail. Um, but essentially, let's do part A. And maybe this one I'll kind of just explain. We're told that this guy here converges. So the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a n converges. And since that is true, that means eventually the terms in this sequence have to be small. They have to be, let's say, less than 1. So if you go far enough down the sequence of a n's, maybe the first few terms are not you know, less than 1. That's fine. But eventually, all terms will have to be less than 1. Um, so we can just Give, give that give the term the time when that happens a name so let's say um for all um you know we can say that there exists some number capital n such that for all lowercase n which is at least the big n uh, we can say that a n is less than one and we know all the terms are positive so we don't have to worry about putting an absolute value sign there um okay cool um now why is this relevant well then we can say that the sum from n equals 1 to infinity, um, or maybe I'll use k here, the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of a k squared, the thing we're trying to show converges. This is going to be equal to the sum from k equals 1 to uh, lowercase, oh, capital N, sorry, minus 1 of a k squared, plus the sum from k equals n to infinity of a k squared. Now, this guy here might be bigger than 1, we don't know. We don't really care. It's a finite sum. So this is definitely going to be finite. And how about this thing here? Well, we know that when k is at least n, because of this result here, we know that the ans are less than 1. But that means that when I square them, that's going to be even smaller. So this thing here is going to be less than the sum from k equals n to infinity of a k, since we know all those terms are less than 1. And when you square them, it makes it smaller. And this thing here, we know it also converges um, because of what, what we're told in the question. And so that means that the sum of the squares converges. And that basically deals with part A. And as I say, you know, I'm not proving this super rigorously. I'm just giving you an idea. To, to go through this more formally, you just put some epsilons and deltas in there quite carefully. Uh, or epsilons and n's in there, I guess, in this case. Anyway, let's move on to B. We want to show that the series, the sum from n is 1 to infinity of the square root of a n, b n converges. And now we see square roots here and maybe a nice little tip that you should, uh, you should keep in mind when you're dealing with these sorts of things is the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality. So here we're going to consider, um, so we can write it like this. So the way that I always kind of think about this is this sum here, or is kind of like if I did root a1, root a2, oops, root a3 and so on. Let's just go up to root a k as a vector dotted with root b1, root b2, root b3, blah, 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 all the way up to root bk. So this is kind of the way I think about it. It's a dot product. Now, the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality says that this guy here must be less than or equal to the magnitude of each of these vectors. So this must be less than or equal to the magnitude of this first vector. 
times the magnitude of the second vector. Like so. Okay, cool. And now, what is the magnitude of this? Well, we can just use the Pythagoras kind of definition of the magnitude, or the L2 definition of the, the magnitude. It's this term squared, which is just A1, plus the second term squared, so root A2 squared is A2, and so on, all the way up to AK. And then same thing here. This is going to be B1 plus B2 plus blah, 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 up to BK. And now you can do some limits as K goes to infinity or whatever, but at the end of the day, this thing here is finite. Uh, sorry, it is less than infinity. Even as k goes to infinity, it's infinity. It's just let. It's just that term there. So if I call that sum a, and this sum here, here b, this is less than or equal to a or the square root of a b. And so therefore, this guy here is bounded above. You can think of it as a monotonically uh, monotonic increasing sequence, and so it converges. There's a bunch of ways to finish this one off. Um, but yeah, we're just using Cauchy-Schwarz here to prove part b. Let's clear this up and let's move, let's move on to part C. Okay, so for part C, we have the sum of root a n times n to the minus p. And we want to first show that it converges when p is bigger than a half. Now, immediately we see the letter p and we should be thinking of the p series test, which basically is also kind of do with the harmonic sum and variance of it. But basically this guy here, the sum uh, from n is at least one of one over n to the p. This is less than infinity or converges if and only if p is greater than 1. And this is what this is supposed to remind us of. So how can we prove this here? Well, we've got p to be bigger, some number bigger than a half. So if we just say let p be bigger than a half, then we can think of root a n times n to the minus p as root a n times root n to the minus 2p, like so. And then this is just root a n times n to the minus 2p. And if I just say let to b n equal n to the minus 2p, then because of this p series test up here, if p is bigger than a half, 2p is bigger than 1. And so therefore, the sum of b n's will converge because of this p series rule. But then we have that the sum of, sorry, we have that the sum of b n is less than infinity. So then we can just apply part b. We can just apply what we've just proved in part b. And so therefore, the sum of this guy will converge. And that's exactly the same as the sum of root a n times n to the minus p. So that does indeed converge. Great. So part c here, we want to show that this doesn't work when p is a half. So we've got to be right on the borderline here, a case or an example for a n or what a n could be for this not to converge. And we're probably thinking about the harmonic series here or something like that. And you can have a play with this here. But it turns out if we choose a n to equal 1 over n times log n or ln of n, I'll, I'll write log n, because this is what you would do at university, log n squared like so. So this is just ln of n if you've never, you know, at a university in math you don't normally write log for log base n. We only deal with natural logarithm so we call, we just call that log. Anyway, a n is 1 over n times log n squared. Okay, so I just need to show that this uh, doesn't converge. Sorry, I need to show that the sum of a n does converge, but the sum of root a n times n to the negative half does not converge. Okay, so let's see why this here converges. Uh, so the sum of a n, this is just the sum of 1 over n log n squared. And I guess maybe I should have said here, this is going to be defined if n is at least 2. And, you know, when n is 1, you can just call a 1 whatever you want. Let's say 1. doesn't really matter. Um, cool. So a n is going to be 1 over n times log n squared if n is at least 2. But it's going to be just 1 if n is 1. Cool. Okay. So I'm basically just doing the sum from 2. It doesn't really, it's not going to change whether this converges or not. What does this equal? Well, to see whether we're not actually worried about what this equals, we're just worried about whether it converges or not. For this, I'm going to be using the integral test. So we want this, this converges if and only if the integral from 2 to infinity of 1 over x, uh, and I'll put ln here, ln x squared dx is less than infinity. Um, how can we show that this is true? Well, we can just do this with a substitution. So we could say let u equal ln x, and then this thing here just becomes the integral from ln 2 to infinity of 1 over u squared. 
to u and that is just minus one over u from infinity oh, oh gosh infinity that's a horrible infinity let me do that again infinity to ln2 or ln2 and that's just one over ln2 anyway that's that's definitely a finite number and so that means that this integral converges and so this sum definitely converges as well okay cool let's just quickly check that the root uh, sum of root a n times n to the minus half doesn't converge Pause! I've decided to set up my own tutoring company to help you study maths at a top university. So if you like the way I explain things, go check it out. Let's get on with the video. So the sum of a n times n to the minus half is equal to the sum, oh sorry, the root a n, is going to be 1 over root n times log n times n to the minus half, which is equal to uh, the sum of 1 over n log n. Now, why does this not converge? Well, this is, in fact, even smaller than the harmonic series, yet it's still just about, just very, very, very slowly diverges off to infinity. And we can see this just by, um, again, we can do this by the integral test. Um, this converges, or this is equals infinity, if and only if the integral from 2 to infinity of 1 over x ln x dx equals infinity and again you can just do this via a substitution if we just say ln x is u this integral here becomes the integral of ln2 from ln2 to infinity of 1 over u du and this is just ln of u from infinity to ln2 and that's just infinity because ln of infinity is infinity and therefore this sum here diverges just ever so slightly and that solves this problem. This is a university problem from the University of Cambridge. And of course, you have the pressure of doing this in an exam hall. In Oxford, at least one of the funny traditions is when you do an exam, you have to wear what's called subfuss. So I'll try and put a photo of myself and subfuss on the screen now. But this is uh, what just a silly tradition. Also, I believe Cambridge doesn't have it, but I think it's quite a nice tradition. Um, but maybe different people disagree. Um, but a nice little problem. As I said, I haven't solved it as rigorously as you would be expected to in an exam just for for the sake of uh, making this maybe a bit more accessible to those who haven't seen real analysis before. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, please do give this video a like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.